All right, YouTube, today I wanna to talk about the difference between distance traveled and something called displacement. See, displacement forms the foundation of what we call kinematics, which is loosely translated the measurement of motion. So to understand the difference between these two terms, I wanna take a look at this little Lego dude here, and we're gonna let him walk around back and forth. Now imagine we're in math class, and he's walking around not on just a big empty field here, uh, but rather back and forth along a number line. So this number line has different positions marked along it, and so we're starting with our dude at, at zero. We could have him start anywhere we want, but we'll have him start right here. Uh, and we're gonna let him move. All right, so first let's have our little, a little guy walk, say from zero over to a position of four. And then we're gonna have him turn around and walk back, let's say all the way over to this position over here of negative two. So that would be a distance traveled from four all the way to negative two. If you count them up, that's, that's a distance of six. And so with just this little bit of motion that this person has gone through, we can actually show the difference between distance and displacement. Now, most people come into physics with a pretty good prior understanding of what distance traveled is. I mean, imagine this, this little guy right here, he's reached middle age and now he's got a little fitness tracker or Fitbit on or something like that, and he's counting his steps. And so if he walks this way, four meters or four feet, whatever you want to use for units, he's moved four and then comes back another six. Well, ultimately the distance traveled is just the sum of all of those little individual distances. So here we'll just say his distance traveled, I'm gonna call that capital D, was equal to four plus six. So that's 10. Now the thing about distance traveled is that direction does not matter. I mean, if our guy had started here and gone four this way and then another six this way, it'd be kind of a crap example, he'd be off the page, but it would have still traveled 10. And so having him go right and then left, that, that was irrelevant. If he's got a little fitness tracker or step counter or something like that, it still says he's traveled 10, regardless of which way he went. See, now the thing about displacement is that it works a little bit differently than distance traveled. You see, displacement is given by change in position. Or if you want to write this out as a more usable equation, you can say a final position minus an initial position. And while at first glance it may seem like it's ultimately the same thing as distance traveled, realize it's not. And I'll show you why. If we look at the displacement of our little dude going back to the beginning, right there. Start a position of zero and went to a position of four. So we're gonna look at the displacement just over this first little phase of motion. So the displacement here, uh, over that first phase of motion, I'll call that D1, is gonna be equal to his final position. That was four minus his initial position at zero. So four minus zero, of course, is four. And that got him to right there. Then over the second phase of motion, he started at a position of four and went all the way over here to negative two. So our final position over here is gonna be negative two minus our initial position, which isn't zero. Realize the second phase of motion started over here at a position of four. So he's at an initial position of four. Well, negative two minus four is negative six. And the big takeaway from this is that the direction here mattered. Moving to the right produced a positive displacement. But moving to the left produced a negative displacement. So the main conclusion here being that unlike distance traveled where direction does not matter, with displacement, direction does matter. And we can show the direction of displacement with either a positive or negative value. Now ultimately our little guy started here, went over to the right and had a positive displacement in the first phase of motion, and then boom, went all the way over to the left here. From start to finish of everything that our dude did, the total displacement will be the final position, that's here, negative two, minus the initial, that's zero. Leaving a total displacement of negative two. And ultimately this negative is simply telling us that the, the Lego dude finished two to the left of where he began. 
This idea that displacement can be positive or negative, and it can go up or it can go down, is very different from the idea of distance traveled, which is always going to increase. Now, the reality of what's to come is that we're going to deal a lot with displacement as we look at the motion of objects and eventually get to the point where we're actually modeling them mathematically and graphically. We'll save that for another time. And on that note, that's all for now.